Hello everyone, this is the tutorial of week 12 and we are going to talk about a very interesting topic which is data warehouses and OLAP tools. In this tutorial we will, we will introduce data warehouses, we will provide you some definitions and as well make you familiar with some terminology uh, in, of this domain. Then we will mention the main characteristics of the data warehouses. After that, we will mention a very important element in data warehouse, which is the multidimensional model. So, multidimensional model, which is the data modeling way of designing data warehouses. After we will mention the steps for building your data warehouse, the data warehouse of your company. And then we will discuss compare data warehouse with views. So some people uh, just assume that data warehouse are like views, just or materialized views, but just a bit better. But we will discuss how data warehouses are so much superior to, to views or materialized views. Then we'll mention the challenges and difficulties of implementing the data warehouse. So we have a very interesting tutorial ahead of us. Let's now introduce data warehouses, provide you some definitions and make you familiar with the terminology of this domain. But before that, I would like to take a step back and take a look at the database systems that you have developed so far in your company or for your projects. These are mostly transaction-oriented databases. This is what you have been done so far, transaction-oriented database systems, where the focus are mostly on CRUD operations. So you are creating records, reading, updating, deleting records, so your system database system mostly care mostly on single transactions and also on the real state of the system at a certain moment. So when you read or write the database you'd like to that that change or that read that access reflects immediately or updates immediately the condition of the state of your database. And also in transaction-oriented database systems, uh, they are driven, they are uh, generated, developed mostly to support or to attend the operational level of your company. I don't mean lower level, but I mean more operational. For example, you have a person in your company who does an update of data of your clients. And this happens thousands of times a day. You have another person in the company who is selling goods for your company and it happens thousands of times. You have another person who is updating the inventory of the company and it happens also thousands of times a day per month. So these are operations that maintain, the maintain happen many times a day and maintain uh, the, the company makes the company going on. Then uh, we have also in transaction oriented databases online transaction processing tools. So tools that perform queries, return the online state of the system or update the, the system immediately. So this is what you have been doing so far. And when we think about databases, this is what we think, because these are the conventional use of databases. Now, what are data warehouses? So before we give the formal definition of data warehouses, let's mention what the data warehouses do. So it will be easier to understand what data warehouses are. They focus on analytical data. That is, the purpose is to generate, to manipulate, to provide data that will support decision making. 
So you have no longer an operational level, but a manager, for example, a high profile user and a just one user will use that, that you will consume that data. So in for what not to make operations, but to to take decisions that will affect the company. So the nature of the user is different. Also, data warehouses support historical data. You don't care much about the current state of the system, but you care about queries, you make queries, you, you make questions that require some historical analysis. For example, what is the trend on the number of users of a certain or buyers, customers of a certain product in the last 12 months? So such type of question, uh, it's hard to implement. It's possible, but it's hard to implement in, in the tra traditional database systems, but they are relatively easy in data warehouses. Or questions like, what is the number of average number of users who were in debt in 2018, live in Oregon, US, and didn't buy any car in 2020. So there is some time window manipulation here, and which is really hard to, to perform in the traditional transaction transaction oriented database because it does not maintain uh, historical data, just a snapshot of the real state of the, uh, the online state of the system, but in data warehouses, so it's possible to answer such type of questions. And another characteristic is of uh, data warehouses. They, they have or they should have an improved data access read performance. So while in the operational level, transaction-oriented databases, there are constant uh, updates uh, and deletes and certain records. So the manager will not update the data. It will basically read the information will consume the information, will not uh, write anything. So the performance of reading is easier to implement and, and also uh, it will allow quicker manipulation, reading of this data. Another characteristics of data warehouse is that this data comes from multiple sources. So for example, uh, the person who maintains information of the clients of the company doesn't does not have a system implements uh, spreadsheets uh, uh, Excel spreadsheet. The person who who controls uh, the the system not the person the system that maintains the products of the company runs on an Oracle database. The person who maintains the inventory, use a legacy system which is maintaining Postgres or MySQL. So you have different sources and the data warehouse consume these different sources, integrate these different sources and transform the, or apply standards on, the, on these different sources and deliver this data unified cleaned to, to the manager. So this data comes from multiple sources. Uh, such type of data manipulation require more complex, not exactly very complex, but a more complex, more elaborate data modeling. So this is what I already mentioned in the previous slide is the multidimensional multidimensional model multidimensional model which enables high profile users decision makers to manipulate this data properly and easily so we will have chance to talk about the multidimensional models still in this tutorial and data warehousing also enable users to to query to create their queries to customize queries or just uh, run queries with parameters to enter their parameters. So allow OLAP tools 
for accessing this data. What is OLAP? OLAP is uh, Online Anal Analytical Processing. So it's a term that is used to describe the analysis of complex data in the data warehouse. So tools that enable managers, for example, to create dashboards, for example, easily created dashboards. Um, well, so far we didn't mention what a data warehouse is. We mentioned what a data warehouse looks like. So, uh, specialists uh, reference in this field, W. H. Amon, uh, characterized data warehouse as a subject oriented, integrated, non volatile, time invariant collection of data in support of management decisions. So, his, his definition of data warehouse wrap up the characteristics we mentioned in the previous slide. Also, in, in other words, data warehouses are designed to precisely support efficient extraction, processing, presentation. So, are designed to, to support what is called commonly ETL processes. That is, extraction information from different sources. We mentioned it about the different sources that data warehouses consume. Transformation. So the application of standards, also the uh, a more complex process of extract extracting, transforming this data in an appropriate format for the, the manager, and loading this information in a database that is easily accessible in an easy and uh, in the proper format, which we already mentioned. This format is the multidimensional model for the use of managers for the use of making analytical decision making so this is also a, a summary of what data warehouses encompass or include and the use of data warehouses so this data generated maintaining a data warehouse is commonly used by all app tools. App tools we mentioned previously. So these are tools that allow the online analytical processing of the, the information, generating useful information or enable decision making by providing, for example, a dashboard. Dashboards where you can see trends in the number of, of customers. You can also observe patterns on the prices of commodities so a lot tools enable high profile users managers to perform such queries to to create such such dashboards such reports but this is not everything the warehouse also have a plus it enables the use of data mining and overall any machine learning techniques to run on this data, this processed data. So it's a very powerful instrument for a company for, for collecting, analyzing, and processing data that your company generates in several systems. Next, let's talk about the characteristics of data warehouses. Before I mention the characteristics, let's take a look at this picture on the top of this slide. So what we see here is an illustration of the commonly called ETL process, which is used for extract information, extracted data, not information, but extracted data from different sources, from Excel files, CSV files, from XML files, from different types of databases. So to extract information, make some transformation, clean up of this data, preparation of this data, applying standards in an area called stage. So you have a stage area where you perform this, these transactions, this pre-processing, and then you load this data, already ready for cons consumption in the data warehouse. So ETL process 
a very important uh, element in, in a data warehouse. So it's how the data uh, is captured, is collected from different systems, from the X system of data in your company. Uh, it's it's cleaned up, it's prepared to be loaded in a data warehouse and then consumed by hyperfile users. So this is an interesting picture which summarizes uh, the DTL process. Now, what are the characteristics of the data warehouses? So let's mention here we have five main characteristics. One, the multidimensional data model is probably one of the most important elements in a data warehouse, multidimensional data model, because it enables the use of all lab tools, it enables the use access by, by managers, which are not technicians, they are not specialists in, in information technology. So it's important to be easy, easy for usage. So the multidimensional model has a key role to, to enable you, uh, high profile users, in this case, managers of the company, which are typically not from the IT uh, background, to access this data. Another characteristic is support. It, it's a, you probably remember it, it supports historical data. So it, it should support time series and trend analysis. So data warehouses are not used for accessing, to maintain or control single operations of your company. You don't use a data warehouse to see uh, the data of a, a customer with ID 1, 2, 3. No, you don't use it. You instead, you use to observe trends on the, the sum, the quantity of clients, that your company is losing for the last two weeks. So, to observing historical data, trend data, trend analysis. Another characteristic, because you are manipulating historical data, so obviously there is more data to query. So, data warehouse generally maintain an order of magnitude larger than sort of source databases. So we are not talking here about gigabytes, we are talking about uh, not about terabytes, it's petabytes and, and much more than that. The information of data, data warehouse is not subject to modification. I mean by modification is updated uh, and delete. It's mostly appends and, and reads. And the data warehouse insertions are handled by the warehouse's ETL process, which are illustrated in a picture on the top. So, which does a large amount of pre processing. As you can imagine, it, it is a large amount of pre processing. There's a lot of effort accessing this information, clean up. Just a, an example. Uh, how it can be work, uh, how it can be messy sometimes. For example, in some systems, uh, you have a gender, gender, and gender is manipulated as an integer. Other systems, for example, is a string. Other systems, you might have uh, a bit. Other systems, so if you, you can think. Uh, we are talking about just one attribute. Uh, and how you should standardize this single attribute to be loaded in the data warehouse. So this requires a lot of preprocessing. Maintain some temporary tables here, converting, mapping the attributes in such a type of attributes in your system to, to the data warehouse. So you need to have some metadata. So it's a lot of work. ETL process are, are, are very useful, but also very hard to implement. Okay, so let's talk now about the data modeling for data warehouse. So the data is designed 
Okay, so let's talk now about the data modeling for data warehouse. The data in a data warehouse is typically presented as OLAP cubes or as dimension and factor tables. So OLAP cubes, you process information and you generate data uh, in such a way that will be accessed by very specific OLAP tools in a form of a cube, a multi-dimensional cube. So for example, imagine in this particular example, you if you want to query, uh, you have a dimension which is products, you have one dimension which is location, a continent, and you have a dimension which is time. You could have other dimensions, many more than this one. And then you are querying this, you want to know, uh, the answer to the following question. How many computers, how many units were sold in 2008 in Asia? So in this case, you have a cube, imagine a Rubik's cube you are manipulating. So a certain cell will answer this question. One of these cells in one dimension, you get computers. So, okay, so computers, you have this dimension. But you care just about Asia. Okay. If you don't specify the time, so you will have all these years information. You could sum up, you could have the average for the last years, you could do something. But in this particular query, we want just 2008. So you just extract one cell of this, this cube, hypercube, and then you answer the question. So all up cubes. Are really uh, handy, useful when you want to make uh, dim uh, multi-dimensional queries, projections of multi-dimensional queries. This is what we are doing here. Next, we have fact and dimension tables. So, fact and dimension tables are tables where you organize uh, the, the fact of of your business. For example individual transactions for example a cell in a store and then you describe these facts to answer questions like who when how where So the description of who, when, how, where are contained in the dimensions, where the numerical fact, the, me the measures, the metrics that you want to measure to observe the trend, so on and so forth, are in the factor table. So we will talk more about this particular model here in the next slides. Let's start with all up cubes. So there are several tools for manipulating cubes that allow you to query these cubes and uh, project on these cubes and find information that you want. So there are several tools for this one. So once you generate the cube, you materialize the cube, then you have several tools that allow you to just query this cube, for example, cube to you. And there are some operations that you can perform this cube for example pivoting and slicing slicing you are doing projections for example i would like to see just a certain product so you're slicing the dimension product in a certain period so a certain number of certain years so you also slide in the other dimension the dimension period the dimension time and you also query you you concern you you care just about a certain region, so just uh, Europe and North America, so you can slice the cube to reduce the amount of data or to focus on what is interesting for the for your business. Uh, not just slice, another tool is a pivoting, so I don't want to observe trends of sales by product, but uh, instead sales by region. So you are, you are pivoting, you are rotating the cube just to change the perspective of your query. So 
So these are tools that you can perform with the cube. Well, not tools, but techniques that you can perform with the cube. So this is illustrated in this picture. So in this picture, uh, we changed region. Uh, here we have region and, and product. Before the visualization was product, and here, here is the region. Uh, another thing you can do with cubes is called roll up and drill down. For example, in roll up, you could go up one level. For example, you have several products. You have a product here, 1 to 3, 1 to 4, 1 to 5, 1 to 6, 1 to 7. But uh, you don't care about individual products. You'd like to see products that start with 1. P1 XX. It's like there is some hierarchy here, a hierarchy of products. You can see like products of heat hygiene. So products, you don't care about a toothbrush, but you, you want to see hygiene in general. So you could roll up. You could go up in the hierarchy and then observe the data more, more summarized, more summarized data than what you have. But the same, uh, you can go up in the hierarchy, but you can also go down the hierarchy. I would like to see not just toothpaste, but toothpaste of their particular branch. So you could drill down. So you could roll up and you could also drill down. So this is illustrated in the next picture. Let's now talk about dimension and factor tables. So, dimension tables contain a description and characterization of the data. So, answer questions like where the, this transaction, this, this fact happened, when, who, and how. So, for example, here we have a fact table that cares about business results. So, soon, you know, in a few minutes, we will talk about facts table so you have a certain business result and you want to know okay what in this case which product uh, when so you have the fiscal quarter uh, also where so you have the region the city so on and so forth so these attributes, the, the descriptions, characterization of the fact of the, the numerical data, so these are presented in dimension tables. And the fact tables contain the measure or observed variables, the thing that you want to measure. So the number of sales, the profits, or the, the price, of a certain product that is bought in the supermarket. So th this is the fact. This is the the business observable variable that you want to measure. You want to calculate. You, you so you have measures here. So you have some foreign keys, but you will have, for example, number of products sold uh, at that moment or the discount that was applied for that transaction or the overall price that he, he paid. So you have some variables, numerical data here, some metrics. There are two common multidimensional schemas. You have the star schema, which is here you have the star schema, you have fact table uh, and related, relating to dimensions, dimension tables. And you have snow, snowflake scheme. So you have dimension tables. It's similar to a schema but extended because the dimension tables are normalized. So why? So there are several reasons for that. It depends on the design, depend on for example questions like how often this dimension changes the value of this di in this dimension changed and how how you want to track them this is just an example 
that illustrates why this nose flake uh, schema is relevant. So it might depend on your business. There is no right or wrong answer here. So let's go through an example to illustrate to illustrate the data model, the multi-dimensional model applied to your business. So let's now go through uh, an example, an illustration of how the multi-dimensional model can help you to capture relevant information of your system in a format of factor tables and dimension tables. So let's go through an example and try to identify what is fact and what is dimension. So it's a retail case study. So imagine you you work in, that you are working in a headquarters of a large grocery chain. So imagine a very famous Russian supermarket. And so you are working the headquarters, you're not just working the, in a single branch. So the business has what a hundred, what thousand, thousands of grocery stores spread across several states of, of the country. Each store has a full complement of departments. For example, grocery, frozen foods, dairy, meat, bakery, floral, health, beauty, products. So each store has approximately 60,000 individual products called stock keeping units on its shelves. So product probably has a stock unit key, for example, you can imagine this, like a barcode. So probably we are identifying here what, which is, which is the product. Here we identify stores, store have region. So here you have a where. Okay, let's continue. Data is collected at several interesting places in a grocery store. Some of the most useful data is collected at the cash registers as customer purchase products. So you buy the product and you go to the cashier. So the cashier has a point of sale system. So has a PO system which scans the product barcode at the cashier register. So products have a barcode as well. So apparently SQ is one information, barcode is another one. Measuring consumer takeaway at the front door of the grocery store. As illustrated in this picture, this is the receipt. Other data is collected at the store's back door where vendors make deliveries. So here you have a receipt of a, uh, of a cell. You have, for example, the address. Address again is part of the where. You have the store. So the dimension uh, store has another information, which is a certain ID here. Cashier, interesting. Uh, you also have a who. Who are the cashier? So you can answer questions like, who's, who was the cashier, the most efficient cashier of the month? So you can award this person. Or how often a person was the best employee of the month during the last year? So probably this person deserves uh, an, in an increase in salary. Then you have individual products and the price paid by the product. You also have a discount. So a discount is a characterization. You have a metric, but you also have for what discount? A discount of Easter holiday, a discount for New Year's holiday, is a discount for get rid of the stock. So you have a characterization characterization of the discount. So you have a metric, but you also have a dimension. You have a total uh, of, of the receipts, how, mon how much money was given, how many items, different items. 
transaction has an ID there is a time of the operation so you when there is a unique ID of the of these receipts okay so we are understanding better what the system is about so let's continue so at the grocery store management is concerned with the logistics of ordering stocking selling products while maximizing profit obviously the profit ultimately comes from charging as much as possible for each product lowering costs for product acquisition overhead at the same time attracting as many customers as possible in a high competitive environment uh, so everything is very obvious here some of the most significant management decisions have to do with pricing and promotions so promotions is a interesting element for our customer for our managers the managers of our company so both store management and headquarters market spend a great deal of time tickering with pricing promotions so pricing promotions is a big deal promotions in a grocery store include temporary price reductions ads in newspapers so there are source of these promotions newspapers inserts displays in grocery store coupons the most direct and effective way to create a surge in the volume of products sold is to lower the price immediately so here the focus is on promotions promotions here we are talking about price a 50% reduction in the price of the paper towels especially when coupled with a net and display can cause the sale of the paper towels to jump by a factor of 10 unfortunately such a big price reduction usually is not sustainable because the towels probably are being sold at a loss so you are selling less than you should sell as a result of the, uh, these issues the visibility of all forms of promotion is an important part of analyzing the operations of a grocery store now that we have described our business case study we'll begin to the design of the mission model so before i show the solution we, uh, we don't have much time to extend here in the design but you can think for example what are the facts one important question uh, and this is more on the techniques of the design of your multi-dimensional model is what is the grain of the data in other words one line in the fact table corresponds to what in the real world in our example take a look at the receipts of the company of the POS system the point of sale system so the receipt you you could have one line of the fact table referring to the whole receipts so one line of the table will contain numerical data on the quantity on the sum of the of the products so if you had one line per receipt so probably you have this information this information this information but then you will lose various precious information because you are using a big grain so you are losing data so you probably need a smaller grain so you have one line in the fact table not per receipt but per product so this is an important decision in the design of the relational model or the multidimensional model which is the grain where is the grain of the fact table in this case is one product there will be a repetition certainly there will be this information transaction will appear is several times in this case one two three four four times this information will be repeated this information will be repeated this information will be re repeated this is not a problem for data warehouse it's not a problem so we decide the grain what and the metrics the metrics is the price was paid and the value of the discount 
and the number of units probably contains some information for, for example if you take a look at the supermarket you have two times this product so this would be also a metric so we have an idea what the business metrics are the granularity of the factor table and what are the dimensions so we have who in this case the cashier and so for a dimension seller or cashier we have where so a dimension store which would contain address region city you would contain a dimension discount or so promotion so what's the promotion is new year so you would have this information now that we have an idea how the multidimensional model looks like for this particular uh, business uh, scope let's see how the multidimensional looks like multidimensional model so we have here the factor table which is retail sales facts so as a retail sales which contain foreign keys to the dimensions dimension date dimension store dimension cashier dimension product is important dimension we forgot to mention so the product is also very important dimension promotion which is one of the main concerns of the company as we read in the description dimension payment methods so it was paid by card by cash so this is also important so here uh, we and the facts now let's mention the facts for example we have the discount price the regular price the sales quantity we have some attributes which are not foreign keys and are not metrics but it did help to identify the the fact which is the POS transaction so this identification so we have n metrics here several metrics so now uh, we characterize the fact table how does the dimension how do the dimensions look like so in dimension product we have a description a, a very detailed description of the products for example the crop product description we have the category of the, the product we have the package type is a box is a plastic we could mention this the weight of the of the package so it's three kilos one kilo typically we can have the storage type so it should be dry should it be uh, open air should we could not should be in the refrigerator so on and so forth so you have a very descriptive very detailed information about the the products here so dimension tables typically have many attributes and few lines fact tables typically have few attributes and many lines this is an example of this is just a projection but it illustrates how a product dimension looks like and as you can see it's not normalized this is not bad not for data warehousing for data warehouse this is how we improve performance continuing taking a look at the, the dimensions so take a look for example dimension uh, store now let's take a look at the other dimension dimension for example uh, store in the store you have the city you have the county you have the zip code so you have a lot of descriptions about the where in this case the store and you also have the mission uh, promotion which is a big deal for the, the company as we write in the description so here what we have is a star scheme so you have a factor table and you have four keys in the, in the factor table point to the dimensions you have some description which is necessary to identify 
uh, to connect the the grain which is product with with the receipt and mainly the metrics so this is the main thing in the in the factor table dimensions many columns describing who when where how and and few relatively few fewer lines so in this case this figure illustrates the query in a study schema for example you are looking for sales in 2003 this product and this cashier for example this is what we're doing now let's talk about the actions to build your data warehouse so you you need to concern about your concerns are acquiring this data uh, loading this data into your data warehouse and how to query this data so let's start with acquisition of the data acquisition of the data uh, so there are several topics uh, several issues that you should consider first there will be multiple heterogeneous sources so for example you might read csv files access spreadsheets which are not spreadsheets not in a plain format like csv you might have different databases uh, for example, DBJO, Oracle, MySQL, Postgres, so and so forth. The second issue, data must be formatted for consistency within the data warehouse. So if gender in your data, data warehouse is a string, so this, this systems, this source, data sources, might have different representations for the attribute gender so in this example so you may, you must make it consistent so you need consistent representation for the attributes in your data warehouse the data must be clean to ensure validity for example uh, clients without name so some of the sources might have no name for the clients and you need to take decisions such as delete the records, ignore, or uh, add a fake name, or provide uh, non-informed attributes, non-informed value for that attribute, so on and so forth. The data must be fit into the multidimensional model, which we discussed previously. So it's going to the facts, it's going to the dimension where this attribute is going to and this data must be loaded into the data, data warehouse obviously the next thing you should consider you are building your data warehouse is loading policies so you are appending typically it's appending so there there is there are new cells today in the chain of supermarket so there are new cells thousands millions of cells what should you do you could simply append this information in the facts table. There are new products, append in the dimension products. There are new store, append the dimension store. Or you can have a partial refreshing. For example, you have a fact table uh, sales in the last 30, 30, days, 30, 30 days. So you are just refreshing since day one, not 30 days, the last 30 days, it's since day one. So it's this month, start from day one. So you are refreshing the full table, for example, it's possible. Or a sliding day, a sliding window. So the last 30 days. So the last 30 days you keep sliding in, removing old entries and adding new entries. The partial refreshing, you are just reloading everything. But obviously the scope of this fact table is smaller than a full factor table with his uh, long history data on it and finally and probably most important thing you know that every housing is query so knowledge workers and decision makers 
should be able to use tools, simple tools, for running parametric queries, ad hoc queries, or even using data mining techniques. So if your data, your data warehouse is perfect, but it's not easy for usage for your bosses, for the managers, for the stakeholder, main stakeholders of the data warehouse, it will not succeed. And the access component of the data warehouse must provide support for structured queries as well. Parametric queries and ad hoc random queries that your customer, your manager might want to, to perform. Now, uh, let's compare data warehouse and views. So some might just mention or oversimplify data warehouses. They are just another way of visualizing data. They are not very different of views. So people who say it cannot be wrong because data warehouses are way superior to views. For example, data warehouses persist uh, stored data, materialized data, not data on demand. So in views are virtual tables and you materialize on demand. Even materialize the views. So you materialize views, you need to implement policies for reloading and updating these materialized views. So but it's still on demand. The Tory House are not just relational views, they are multi-dimensional views with different levels of aggregation. For example, in, uh, you remember in the OLA cube, so in the dimension product, you could apply hierarchy and you could roll up or drill down the hierarchy to analyze data, hygiene data or toothpaste data or a toothpaste or a certain company. So you have multi-dimensional with levels of hierarchy. In views, it's much more complex to implement such a thing. Data warehouses can be indexed to optimize performance. So obviously virtual tables cannot be indexed. The tables can, can be, but not the indexes, uh, not the, the views. Data warehouse provide large amount of integrated and of temporal data. So you have the historical data in views you don't. And finally, data warehouse allow you to query multiple sources, which are put together via complex ETL processes. So obviously this is not done in, in views. Now let's talk about the difficulties, the challenges of implementing a data warehouse in your company. So the first difficulty is the significant operational issues that are involved in this huge project. For example, construction, administration, credit control, project management. So Building the data warehouse of a large organization is a humongous work and it's a challenging task which will require the two requires some pro management for constructing and administrating guarantee the quality meetings with the stakeholders so and so forth. So, uh, another issue the administration of a data warehouse, the administration of the data house is much more complex than the administration of the database. So, uh, not just because of the size, the complexity, the number of different softwares that are, should be integrated for building the data warehouse, but for a point which is stressed in the next, in the next uh, bullet point in this slide. One of the main reasons of this increased complexity is that it requires a large knowledge of the business. So for example, uh, what is this space should be dedicated for the factor table sales, uh, retail sales? It depends uh, what, 
what is your company selling and how often does it sell so you're not just talking managing the database the hard disk the device the hard disk, the software operating system you are also starting to concern to care about the business so how often does your company sell you have a new information which is a transaction id which data type to use so this extrapolates the database management because you need to understand okay how uh, give me the receipts of a cell how many attributes there are in the, in the, in the transaction identification or cashier for example should we have a, a dimension cashier is it possible that some of the sales do not have a cashier can the, the customer go directly to a certain machine and, and just checking its products and automatically have the total and it, it can pay so again it depends on the business so it's much harder administrate and maintain a data warehouse than a simple uh, database and lastly it requires uh, effective management skills because it's a large team to work together with different set of skills some technical some soft skills because you need to make agreements with stakeholders you need to provide training for using the all app tools you need to have technical people to maintain the database in, in a in the software level in the hardware level their expectations to, to agree so it requires effective leadership to maintain a, a, a data warehouse in a large company so uh, we end, we finish here the tutorial I hope you enjoyed and it is a topic which is really interesting data warehouses are essential for large companies since they provide the stakeholders the high profile managers value information provide that they have the right tools and the, the support and experience and it allows not just the use of all lab tools by these managers but also techniques like data mining machine learning in general to perform more complex analysis and discover knowledge uh, from this data so it's a really important tool really interesting if you are going to work in a big company if they don't have a data warehouse it might be worthy to start a project but be aware is a humongous project is a humongous task but once it's done and continuously maintained so it's a precious asset for the company so this is it for the tutorial today thank you very much for watching the video and if you have questions just get in touch with me so bye bye and take care